I can say the prayer. That's truly a great honor because for me, every meeting that we went to, when Ed started with a prayer, it made me know I was there. He was such a good Christian soul, and he had put a lot of effort into his prayer. Sometimes he'd bring in the military and whatever the days was, but his prayer was superb. So for that, I just want to say, bless us, O Lord, and these I give you what you are about to receive from thy bounty to Christ, our Lord, amen. Thank you, Ed. My name is Danielle Verwald, and I am from Irv's Log in Oak Creek. I am currently the chair of the Wisconsin Restaurant Association Board of Directors. We are here tonight to celebrate the life and accomplishments of Ed Long. When I look around this room, I see a lot of wisdom in this room. And in listening to the conversations at the bar tonight, I have to realize that in all the years that I've known Ed, and that's been um, more than I, um, certainly more than I want to admit, I cannot think of one bad negative thing to say about the man. He was an outstanding example of a servant leader and a wonderful, wonderful human being. So we are here today to celebrate his life. Ed was a restaurateur, an association executive, a lobbyist, and a leader in the industry. But most of all, he was a friend to all of us here tonight. First, I would like to thank Society Insurance for sponsoring this evening as we kick off the Ed Lump Restaurant Advocacy Special Issues Fund. Society, thank you very much. Society are Rick Parks, Rebecca Coleman, Heather Boyer, and Ryan McClone. Thank you so much for your support this evening and to the restaurant industry. I would also like to thank all of the special hosts this evening. They are listed in your program. Thank you so much for your support. If you would like to make a donation to this new fund, we have donation forms available at your table and at the registration table. I would also like to thank John Cavanaugh for hosting us this evening. We will have a short program before the entrees are served to share what Ed meant to the restaurant industry. It's kind of funny when you say short program to say what Ed meant to the restaurant industry. I'm just reading the script. Guys. <laughs> We want to talk about his impact in helping our industry thrive. To begin with, I would like to bring up Steve Davis, past chair of both the Wisconsin Restaurant Association and the WRA Education Foundation Board of Directors, to share some thoughts on behalf of the board and our members. Good evening. Uh, first, I guess I'd like to say there's, you know, I've been like most of us in this room, real fortunate to be in this room and, and sharing meals and stuff with uh, many of you many times through the years. And there's probably no reason I'd rather not be here than what we're here for tonight. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. I'm honored to have the opportunity this evening to pay tribute to our good friend, Ed Long. He's a WRA board member of 25 years. I believe I can share the feelings of all current and past board members with the family of Susan and Ed in expressing the great loss we all feel in the sudden passing of Ed last fall. When thinking of what Ed meant to the WRA over the years, I keep coming back to three distinct thoughts of that. First, I think of Ed as a talented and dedicated leader. Ed was successful in helping build the WRA into one of the top restaurant associations in the country. His leadership was instrumental for the WRA in building an organization that served thousands of restaurant and food service industry members around the state. Many of those members, including myself, feel that our success in the industry was directly related to the knowledge gained through WRA membership and involvement. Next, I think of Ed as a mentor. Those of us fortunate enough to have had the opportunity to work with Ed in the leadership of the WRA during his tenure valued his knowledge as well as his ability to mentor both his board members 
and the talented staffs can put together over the years. Ed understood the importance of a diverse board, truly representing the restaurant industry and how important that was to the success of the WRA. He worked hard to help us all achieve the goals we set. Ed's mentoring inspired involvement by WRA members on many other boards and committees, including state and local government, education and tourism, as well as some who went on to serving elected office. Ed's ability to share his knowledge and vision also led to advancement opportunities for many of his talented staff members, both within the WRA and many other trade organizations and businesses in Wisconsin. Finally, I like to think of Ed most as a friend. The opportunity to work closely with Ed over the years led to many friendships that were probably Ed's greatest accomplishment. All of us knew Ed to be a loyal friend, one who was not afraid to let us know of his feelings through his words and actions. I believe of all we gain from knowing Ed, his friendships will remain his greatest legacy. In closing, what would a tribute to Ed be without a toast to his memory? Please join me in lifting your glass in honor of Ed, a true leader, mentor, and friend. Here, 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 here. Thank you, Steve. Next up, I'd like to invite Bill Smith of the National Federation of Independent Business in Wisconsin, speaking on behalf of the Lobby Corps. Come on, Bill. Pressure. <laughs> <laughs> well, good evening, everybody. Um, <clears throat> um, we're here tonight to celebrate. We're here to uh, honor the accomplishments and we uh, recognize the legacy of a great leader of the restaurant industry, the tourism industry, the hospitality industry, and to recognize somebody who was really highly respected throughout the lobbying community. So let me start. Ed and I go back um, many, many years. I'm a lot younger than, than he was, but <laughs> get that out there right now. Um, but our careers were starting to take off at about the same time. When I started with NFIB, I had to cover four states. So when I worked in Wisconsin, you know, a lot of people didn't think I was belonged here, you know, because I'd be here on Tuesday in the capital, and then by, you know, Thursday I'd be in South Dakota or some other state. So I wasn't really well received. But there were three people back then that did, did kind of open their arms, if you will and uh, said, you know, this guy, you know, I didn't know that he might be okay, you know, you know a lot of people need to kind of, be kind of harsh, be kind of mean. There were three people, it was John Forday, and my lobby friends over here will recognize that name. He represented the Milwaukee Chamber of Commerce. Um, there was uh, Tom Cannon, who represented the Gasoline Dealers Association, as well as some of the tourism attractions industry, and there was Ed Lump. And again, this is back in the early 80s. Um, Ed and I were, we recognized that we were both just kids, kind of starting out, trying to have a little credibility in the lobbying business. But we also recognized that we were allies on a lot of the different issues. We joined an organization called CORA, the Conference of Retail Associations, where we had a common bond on a a whole cross-section of different issues. And with that, through the core group, Ed and my friendship started to grow. Not just not just on the issues, but also on, on some of the things that happened outside the Capitol. Golf, for example. <laughs> for example. Now Ed, Ed was a, how many, I've had a lot of you in this room play golf with Ed. Bob, Senator Welch, you're back there, a lot of heads nodding. Ed liked golf. And he always, you know, he was, but he was very competitive. 
I remember at one time he said, you know, if I just had better equipment. <laughs> better equipment. That's all it takes. I can do this. And so he told me one time, Susie, um, that he bought some new clubs. At the clubhouse. Pings. Pings. And he called me up after, he, I wasn't there when he did it, Susan. But he called me up afterwards, he said, I got some new clubs. This is going to be really great. And so I said, what'd you buy? He said, I got some pings. I said, where'd you get them? At the clubhouse. I said, oh, brother. They you know, charged you $10 for a pair of socks at the clubhouse. And I said, but he said, I got one problem. Susan doesn't know about it. <laughs> but I have another problem. She found the receipt on my bed. <laughs> so, well, Ed, you're on your own. <laughs> I kind of this me. You know, you're way ahead of me. But the other characteristic about Ed playing golf, he was kind of slow playing golf. <laughs> and I, I had some of my colleagues who used to complain about because you know, I played with Ed a lot in a lot of the events. And he said, can you speed him up a little bit? He's, he's so slow. He, you know, he's analyzing the putts. He's parking on the wrong side of the fairway with the golf cart. He's like, he's doing all these things. He's so slow. He's looking for his golf ball. <laughs> and so I said, uh, you know, I don't think he's that slow. And then I played behind him. <laughs> Way behind me at the Welsh Open up at uh, Green Lake. And I thought, wow, who is that person up there? It's taking forever to get through this hole. And it was Ed, and he is slow. You know, I mean, he is a slow golfer. But you know, we, uh, Ed and I competed. We like competition. Um, I, I will say tonight that you know, we were kind of on the same level competitively. You know, we, we like to compete back and forth. But I'll tell you, one time, he pulled out this golf ball. Now, I don't know how many people play golf here, but it's too tall. And he put it on the green to putt. And I said, I, I, I said it was a beach ball. It kind of looks like a beach ball. Two colors, two bright colors. I said, Ed, you can't do that. Now, Ed and I were not totally committed to the rules of golf, you understand. <laughs> there was a little bit of, you know, leeway taken, a little attitude. And he says, oh no, I can play that. I'm, not, I'm just going to use it for putting. I'm not going to use it on the team. I said, okay, all right, you can play your golf ball. We didn't care. So it was just, just the way that we, we competed with each other. As lobbyists, Ed, uh, you know, himself, obviously, everybody in this room knows that. He was president of the Association of Wisconsin Lobbyists back in 2001. He was president of the Tourism Federation. He was, you know, he was, he was president of the Conference of Retail Associations and I'm sure many, many other organizations. But we were, we were such natural allies. We had so much cross membership between NFIB and WRA. So we had a lot of common issues together. And we worked on many endorsement events, uh, probably at some of the establishments that are represented here tonight. Um, we did conferences and what we used to call back then workshops, now they call them webinars. <laughs> um, we, we worked, um, I remember one time, we worked a lot on unemployment insurance issues. And I remember one time Ed and I were meeting with the Secretary of the Department of of uh, workforce development, uh, Carol Skornica. And, uh, you know, Ed had a way of kind of running his sentences together. I don't know if you ever noticed that he, he wouldn't stop talking. <laughs> you know, the, better, the, the, the sentence would just keep running. So when you lobby with him, you want to kind of get your two cents in too, right? I mean, you're all, you're all there together. And uh, we were there with the Secretary of the Department of uh, Workforce Development, Carol Skornica. And all of a sudden, Ed and I are kind of bantering a little bit back and forth. I don't even remember the issue, but we were kind of going back and forth a little bit. And Ed was trying to you know, make his case. I'm trying to make my case. And Carol, 
She sat back in the chair and said, you know, you two guys should take this act on the road. Because you are so funny. You are so funny. You really ought to take that on the road. Because that's what, that's what Ed and I did. I mean, we had fun. Whether we were in the Capitol lobby, whether we were out there at a fundraiser talking to members, working on behalf of candidates, or whether we were on the golf course. We just enjoyed each other's company because we had so much, so much in common. He turned the Wisconsin Restaurant Association into a powerhouse, not just legislatively, but politically. He had a map, he had a plan, and because I, I was there, folks, I, I was there, and I, I know what the Restaurant Association was before I had got there. And I can tell you that Ed Lopp was such a leader for the hospitality and the restaurant industry that is going to live on for decades. Because he really laid a great foundation for Christine Hilmer and Susan Klom and the rest of us. But most importantly, as Steve indicated, Fred was, uh, Ed was my friend. We, uh, as I said, we go back a lot of years, a lot of history. Um, we got to be friends, not just in the Capitol, but outside the Capitol. We were talking earlier tonight with Susan and her family, and, and uh, Ed would always tell me when they're going to be up north on their camping trips. And it was always more fun talking about the camping trips in the planning stage than in the accident stage. Uh, because they you know, have a lot of work, right? So there's a lot of work up there in, camp in northern Wisconsin. But we would always try to rendezvous uh, up north. We'd try to get together. Even though you know, we're not in the capital, there's no business involved, we just wanted to be together and share a little bit of camaraderie and, and be friends. And that was, that was just kind of completing the whole picture between the two of us. I don't know how many years ago it was, but we decided, Ed and I decided, you know, we, you know, we should really get together in December for Christmas. Just the two of us. So we decided to go to have a lunch at the Madison Club. And we would meet about, uh, about noon, I guess. And uh, we would have lunch. And when we sat down and the waiter would come over, Ed would say, just, this is going to be, a, we're going to be here a long time. <laughs> so we, we, we never could quite figure out who pays. Well, I could figure it out, right, Doug? You know, I could figure it out. If I don't pick up a lot of checks, you know, people know that. <laughs> and Ed knew that for sure, you know, so Billy, I'll pay, I'll pay, that's okay. We'll put it on my membership. So what we decided on, Ed would buy the wine, and I would buy the food. I won every time. He won his wine, and he liked good wine. So we would sit at the Madison Club in December and have like a two-hour lunch, and we would talk about anything that would happen to come into the, the conversation. Family, politics, personalities, rumors, whatever it might be. <laughs> and we would just we'd sit there till two two thirty. So it was it was just one thing that we always look forward to. This is Billy. We we don't have that date on our calendar. We got to meet in December, you know, kind of thing. So we would we would get the date on the calendar and get it done. So it was um, this kind of friendship that we had a hundred years ago. I'm get this out because I got to get this. I was not there a hundred years ago. <laughs> but I saw this, I did see this article, and I wanted to share this with you. It was actually an editorial. But I thought a little bit about it. About this. It was entitled, Being a Lobbyist Shouldn't Carry Stigma. And this was appeared in the Wisconsin State Journal in 1915. And it says, and I'm quoting, the day of the drink buying lobbyists are not as prosperous as they used to be. <laughs> well, I can say that again. <laughs> the term lobbyist has for years in Wisconsin become one which at times bordered on disrepute. This is not 
as it should be. It was simply an inheritance from the, quote, good old days. Now, I thought of that because, you know, Ed was never a drink buying, he was never a drink buying lobbyist. I mean, we got them, they're out there. His approach to advocacy was always professional and always respectful. And those he lobbied, he respected, and he's respected his fellow lobbyists, and he respected the process he followed toward the legislative decision making. I think that, uh, as the article concluded, and I think Ed would, would agree with this. It said there is no reason why a reputable, clean lobbyist should not carry with him as much self-respect as a clean lo legislator. The term lobbyist should not carry with it a stigma. And so this is his legacy. As, he, as the article said, a reputable, a good lobbyist making the right decisions, getting the job done with respect and success. Ed was never, I am proud to stand here tonight, uh, this evening, to join all of you as together we celebrate and honor Ed's legacy. And I'm grateful to have been a, a friend and an ally, a close friend, really, for 36 years. Susan and family, so happy to meet all of you again, to see all of you again. And uh, the kids were so he punched smaller the last time I saw them, <laughs> for that. But uh, thank you all for being here tonight, and thank you for joining together in honoring a great leader of the hospitality industry in Wisconsin. Thank you. Okay, next up we have Representative Mike Kuglich. Mike currently represents New Berlin. He is the former WRA Milwaukee Chapter President and Wisconsin Restaurant Association Board Member. And he will pre be presenting a legislative citation. Thank you, Danielle. And uh, where did Bill Smith go? Because he has a Do you have the citation? John's got it. <laughs> oh, okay, hang on. So they didn't give it to me to make sure that it was going to be here. Right now. Look at that. Those lobbyists, right? Hey, hey, hey Bill, all you got to say is government affairs. There you go. And all of a sudden, it's, it's clean. So I, I'm Michael Witch, I've been um, a legislator for going on 12 years. And the reason I went into the legislature is because of Ed Lowe. So I uh, went to the first Milwaukee WRA chapter meeting. I was 28 years old, which was just a couple years ago. <laughs> um, and, and Ed, you know, before every chapter meeting gave uh, the invocation. And he called it an invocation. And I had to lean over to my wife and go, what does that mean? But it's a prayer. And, and as Tom Warren said earlier, um, his invocations were just, were from the heart. And, and every time he gave one, um, it was so meaningful and you just knew where this individual was and that the integrity of, that, of this individual. Um, so, so that's how I got into politics. But um, I also had the, the opportunity to work with a lot of individuals I see here today Tom Warren with the voice right when Tom Warren speaks everybody knows he's in the room and, and Tom was a mentor another Tom Tom Sachs who is now sporting the Colonel Sanders uh, beard. I think he's now into uh, into chicken uh, I saw Steve Schilling um, in the audience and he's another mentor. I remember I was a young guy and you guys are old then, so I don't know what that means. But, uh, but I just want to say thank you to all those. And then Paul Cunningham, where is he? He's over here. 
Um, you know what? Him and I were two snot-nosed snot young guys at one point, and you remember we worked on the WRA um, gift certificate program. So that's how long ago it was we worked on that. But but I'm just t kind of telling these stories is because for each of us, the one common thread was Ed Lump. Mm -hmm. You know, we are celebrating you know the life of Ed, and, and Ed for all of us, or the most of us, was a mentor, right? He was that North Star that you can kind of point to and that's where you wanted to go. Um, he was a man that was dedicated to his family, but the Lord, and to an industry that he truly loved, and that's the hospitality industry. So I have a citation um, that if Susan could come up and, and maybe some of his family, I'd like to read from the uh, the assembly. But I'm not a young guy anymore, so I need to find my glasses. <laughs> so we have uh, a citation from the state of Wisconsin. It's got the, the state of Wisconsin um, emblem, and it says, and and Bob knows this from the back. Usually you skip half of these whereas, but and because of Ed and, and everything that he means to us, I'm gonna be reading everything. So, uh, the state of Wisconsin citation by the assembly, know you by these presents. Whereas Edward Joseph Lump was born on July 25th, 1942 in Chicago, Illinois, the oldest of Ruth and Edward Lump's four sons. And whereas Ed Lump earned a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Political Science from the University of Wisconsin Madison in 1964, and whereas Ed Lump co-founded the Bratton Brow Restaurant and the E.J. Lump and Company food service consulting firm, and after years of success in the restaurant business, Ed Lump became president and CEO of the Wisconsin Restaurant Association (WRA) and provided outstanding leadership for 36 years in his role before retiring on March 31st, 2018. And whereas Ed Lump brought restaurant industry experience, business acumen, political savvy, strong negotiating skills, integrity, and a talent for storytelling to his job. And I just want to say integrity. Any of us that know Ed Lump, that is, that is something that sticks out is if Ed Lump told you something, you know what's going to happen. And um, in this town, I'll tell you what, that doesn't happen to everybody. <laughs> but when Ed Lump said it, you knew it. Whereas Ed Lump provided valuable services for WRA members, such as model employee handbooks for restaurant owners, educational programs, and the WRA Education Foundation and Scholarship Program. And whereas WRA members increase 15-fold under Ed's guidance. Think of that, 15-fold. Whereas Ed Lump served as past chair of the WRA Board of Directors and as board member for 10 years, and also served with dedication and commitment on the Unemployment Insurance Advisory Council, and that's when he would hook up with Bill Smith over there. <laughs> um, and the des designated representative of Wisconsin Small Business Community. Whereas Ed Lump, throughout his long career, championed legislation to protect the restaurant industry, including a statewide smoking ban and the establishment of the Department of Tourism. And whereas Ed Lump died at the age of 79 on October 11, 2021 in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. And whereas Ed's love for his family, his job, and the restaurant, hospitality, and tourism industry inspired tremendous respect and established a remarkable legacy, which I think all of us are part of. Representative Mike Kuglich, on behalf of the Wisconsin State Assembly, under the Assembly Rule 97, honors the life, the career, and the accomplishments of Ed Lum. There's my signatures, there's the Speaker of the Assembly, Robin Boss, and the Speaker of Tim, um, Tyler August. So Susan and family, thank you for joining us today. And thank you for everybody coming here to celebrate as well.
Hi, everybody. Sorry, Nathan Lump. Um, uh, Ed Sun. Um, and I'm not sure why I volunteered for this in some ways, because I, I maybe thought I was going to be the person who could do this without cracking up, but you'd think after seven months I could, but it's hard for me to talk about my dad um, without cracking up. Um, you know, first of all, just thanks to everyone for being here. It is wonderful to be in a room filled with people who knew my dad and loved my dad, and, um, you know, as we did. And, um, you know, it is, it is fitting, I think, for, at least for me, I'm going to try to keep this relatively brief, but it's fitting for me, at least, to be in a room full of people also who he worked with. Um, and became friends with, of course, through work. But, um, you know, growing up, one of the most amazing things was seeing how much my dad loved his work. You know, he loved us. We knew he, he we knew that, and he gave us a lot of love and a lot of love. But you know, I saw my dad go to work every day, excited, and came home from work every day, excited, not exhausted, excited. And I learned at a really young age that that was possible. That you could bring, you could bring passion and dedication to what you do. All of you in this room do this as well. And you could get something back from it. You know, that it wasn't just something that you, you did to earn a living. It was something that, that fed you as well as a, as a person. Um, and, you know, just a, a small story. I don't want to make it about me, but when I was, um, when I was just starting out after, after I graduated from college and I was interviewing for jobs in, in New York, and I went to this, I'd been through this long process to get a job at this big media company and it was a I, I had gone through this process and I was in my last interview and I was gonna sitting down with the editor-in-chief of this magazine it was a job I really wanted and um, Tom Wallace is the, the, the editor-in-chief at the time who later became a, a mentor of mine um, and I sit down at this table with him and he's got my resume on the table and he beckons me to sit down at the table he doesn't say a word down at the table, he spends five minutes just like reading my resume, not saying anything to me. Um, you can imagine I was so nervous, right? I'm like, what's, the, what's happening here? And he looks up from the piece of paper and he says to me, Nathan, what kind of life do you want to have? It's not the question you're expecting. What to talk about college or what you did in high school, whatever. Um, anyway, but I had an answer. And what I said to him was, I'd like a life like my dad's. And it's not that I want to do what he does, and it's not that I want to live where he lives, but I want to be excited every day about what I do. I want to believe in it. I want to care about it. I want to put my all into it and feel good about it and know that I'm contributing. And that's what I want to do. That's the kind of life I want to have. I got that job, and I've had that kind of life. And, and I owe that to my dad, and, and that's a great gift to me, and that is partially because of all of you in this room. Because you were all part of that too for him. Um, and he brought that back to us, and that's partially why he was a good dad, and a good husband, because he got to do what he loved, and he got to do it with people that he loved, and not everybody gets to live that life. And that is, it was a blessing for him and a blessing for us. And I'm grateful, and I thank you, and enjoy your food and wine. Let's raise, raise a glass. As I started my tenure with the WRA, Ed was an inspiration and mentor, and for that, I am particularly grateful to have had the overlapping time with him. His insights, guidance, and support meant the world to me as I started my journey at the Wisconsin Restaurant Association. Susan, you will continue to be a part of the WRA family, and if there is anything that we can do to help support you or your family, please do not hesitate to let us know. And with that, Christine adds a toast. 
Please raise your glass one last time to toast the legacy and memory of Ed Long. Ed, may your lasting impact on all of us be your example of grace, faith, inspiration, and friendship. Your legacy will live on through your children, your grandchildren, your friends, and all of us who remember and honor in your memory. May all of us leave here and go forth with the lessons learned from Ed Long's life. Cherish your memories, celebrate his life, and may his memory be eternal. To Edmund. Yeah. Yeah.